be real here. Duran, come on, boy. You know you're not gonna fight Tyson, Scott. KD was like, no, y'all no, hold me back. I'm gonna <laughs> go this way. What you finna fight him? <laughs> come on. KD was like, no, y'all no, hold me back. I'm going to go this way. What you for the fight him? <laughs> Come on. This is where I told you where guys try to act like studio gangsters. But that skinny dude that you see that is Kevin Durant might not want to get in a fight with DeMarcus Cousins. I'm just saying. Actually, Kevin Durant, I'd be surprised. If he's never been in a fight. And everything keeps getting worse for him. More behavior begets more behavior begets weirder behavior. Boogie is 6'10", like 270. That's that's the general narrative everyone's saying is, uh, KD, you don't want this business. Worse at faking that he wants to fight than he actually is at fighting. Well, that's like that Twitter account. But like, you're right. <laughs> when you see these characters, like this guy. Hold me back, worse. Iggy. And this lady right here. At least fake it, dude. Get out. But he doesn't fake it. Talking about a player as if they're not scared of them. As if they could beat his ass. Now I'm ready to go. Okay, Jenna, this Let's is the one. That's when you know folks have gotten way too comfortable. Hey, Everything you, about him has been just see, annoying see, this season. You see, after this little incident here. Watch it here. Between Watch Kevin Durant it. and DeMarcus Cousins. Uh, they're both gone. Yep. Uh, the almost unanimous reaction immediately sounded my perception alarm. They both get the second team. Folks seem to believe that KD versus DeMarcus Cousins is not a thing. Folks seem to believe that KD really doesn't want any part of this, and he shouldn't. Let's be real. Let's be real, boy. DeMarcus Cousins swallow your shit. Wait, what? Swallow, what? Swallow. Oh. Well, just watch this. KD got real, real tough the moment the moment Draymond, he's like, okay, now Draymond's here. Okay, now I'm ready to go. Okay, Jenna, this Let's is the go. one. So, so much talking, and he's so dearly confident to mock a man twice his size. If DeMarcus wanted to talk that talk, that's one thing. But the sheer nerve of this mini man to run his little mouth and rear up in his high, adjustable chair to talk more of his brazen sh you see, Nick is the definition of a studio gangster. Because Nick doesn't get near the games. He doesn't do the sideline or halftime show. So he's detached from the actual game and the actual humans, which has led him to a land of overconfidence and pure, oblivious hubris. Annoying, huh? The problem is folks really act like they know DeMarcus Cousins. Like they know him personally. Honestly, if I hear someone like Bill Simmons refer to him as Boogie, Boogie, like he gave him the damn nickname. Boogie Cousins is here. We're not gonna call you DeMarcus, I'm just calling you Boogie. Like he was there when they came up with the nickname? I might have to mail this guy some white powdery substance. Really? Okay, Boogie. 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 And I don't know, I just feel the over-familiarity in people when they toss around names is always a tad disrespectful. Anyway, they also just assume that since he's a big, scary, scowling black man, apparently he's got great hands. Apparently he's a goddamn MMA star in the raw, by default. That all he needs is a dark alley and he'd beat literally anybody's ass. That's a weird spectator fantasy that folks love to project onto our athletes. But what is it based on? Is it because he gets mad? Because he yells at refs? That he has that superior Kendrick Perkins scowl? Is it because folks see him as crazy or emotional or uncontrollable? Where he might just throw caution to the wind and say F it and start boxing? Like a pre-Meta World Peace Ron Artest? Nah, that's not him. To Marcus Cousins, this man has cried more on camera than he's actually fought. Every family in this, in this city matters to me. Every soul in this city matters to me. So it, everything's the same. I'm just, I'm the king of uniform anymore. Which is okay because, you know, the love is still here. It's still going on. Thank you. So, who is this guy really? It's easy to find out. So let's look at his past. Let's find proof in the pudding. It doesn't take much research, and after reading a now defunct Grantland article, another sacrificial lamb on the altar of Bill Simmons' ego, it seems that DeMarcus Cousins growing up, the man, 
the kid, DeMarcus Cousins, was a sensitive, reactive kid who was constantly concerned about folks taking advantage of him, being misunderstood, pretending to be something and turning out to be another. He wore his emotions on his sleeve, as they say, and battled with the idea that he was basically grown man size at the age of 15. And that drastically changes how the world interacts with you. Even family members said he didn't have a regular growing up experience. He didn't get to do all the regular high school, adolescence, growing up stuff. He didn't even date much. It was all basketball. And I'll tell you, a young man around nothing but older men is toxic. And in terms of altercations, on record is one altercation he had with a bus driver. And his high school suspended him for the second half of his sophomore season because of it. And that incident defined him in the eyes of a lot of people in the media. Like when Jameis Wilson stole that crab. Listen, folks make a lot of mistakes. I'm thankful that my college days were not trailed by a TMZ camera. But what's funny is that Cousins has always claimed that he was acting in self-defense on that bus. And if his general life experience is something to build off of, there's a chance that this 16-year-old was faced to deal with a real grown man and the real grown man aggression. Just because Cousins looked like a grown-ass man on the outside. You're not getting the breaks. You're not getting the same consideration from men if you look like a grown-ass man. And he obviously couldn't deal with all this. And he even said between having the top national ranking and his age, he felt like he had a big fat target on his back. In many cases, opposing players and coaches tried to make their bones by taking shots at him, punking him, getting him frustrated. That's his eternal battle. To this day, he's had to learn to take it and not lash out, not fight, not yell. So occasionally he does, and he gets pinned as this aggressive, violent man that will beat anybody's ass. Is that good? Is that a good persona? Zach Randolph sure thinks he is. Zach Randolph, when he said, in my neighborhood, the bullies get bullied, was under the impression that DeMarcus Cousin is that guy. It's clear that this man is dealing with a staggered life experience and clearly doesn't want to take anyone's shit. But that's never manifested itself into DeMarcus, the human fight knight. If anything, he cares too much. He's not cold and detached from human connections and feelings to the point where he could just punch people in the face, he's painfully attached to his emotions. And the people closest to him know that. Why do you think he's so kind of misunderstood or polarizing as a player? Uh, I think just because he's, for one, he's already bigger than everybody. He looks like a bully. But um, he just comes with the mindset of he just plays with an intensity. Like, he don't back down from anybody. He brings with, plays with so much emotions. And I think, uh, I mean, he gets, sometimes he's, don't get the benefit of the doubt and it goes the wrong way and just like a reputation I mean when you get a bad reputation everybody keeps that and hold that towards you and hopefully you keep trying to trying to uh, change it around I mean, he's a great person I mean everybody don't see that but unless you're really around him uh, he's one of those people that uh he's all about first impressions if you don't give him a first impression it's not well you probably won't talk to him ever again so this down to brawl don't give a f perception of him is just a load of wishful stereotypical thinking it really is and this point here the one i'm about to make is infinitely important the only punching demarcus has ever done on an nba court the only beating up he's credited with is when he beat the crap out of that chair well we've seen him go ballistic and get upset in situations like this because cousins now has only played 11 minutes well he got a tee because he just punched the chair yep Otherwise, it's just the same old pushing and bumping that everyone else does. He doesn't even square up, really. I mean, look at these fight mixes on YouTube. He doesn't even pretend to get in a fighting stance. He pushes and shoves, which literally every player ever has done, and then watch him. He either walks away or stands there, arms down, basically trying to hear what the person is saying and letting them know what he thinks. These aren't fights. These are heated conversations. And before they can hold him back, he usually starts storming off in a different direction. And then those pre-programmed participants go into hold me back mode. He's not participating in the ruse, but he can't seem to escape it. He's not a violent thug growing up in the streets, selling crap just to get by. He's just an emotional guy. DeMarcus Cousins is an emotional lesbian. <laughs> He's just had a lot of examples of people turning on him, betraying him. It's ridiculous. It's obvious what's being done out here. It's on a nightly basis. I hope the world can see now what's really going on out here, because it's getting ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. And the city done put me through so much. I had to stay loyal to it the whole time. Hey, I just want to know how you're going to stop God's man. God gave his hardest battles to the strongest souls. The marathon continues. I'm out. And like any other honorable man, he just doesn't want you to bring his family into it. That's some real issues. Don't ever mention my brother again. 
You don't know my f***ing brother. I see this as all selective perception. And here's an example. One day in his rookie season after a close loss to OKC, DeMarcus was clearly not happy, especially with how the final play went. And he directed his outrage towards the inbounder and 10th man, Dante Green, who didn't pass him the ball. This disagreement led to an altercation in the locker room, which led to a team issued suspension. A suspension that was executed by pulling him off the team plane while it was on the tarmac as it was just about to leave Phoenix. They pulled him off the plane, bags and all, and left him. And they did this way by choice. What the f is that? That's cold. That's embarrassing. He had his bags packed and everything. I mean, damn. They took him off the plane like he's a terrorist or something. Like he was shouting Allah Akbar. Here, a, a few quick notes here. No. They didn't suspend Dante Green, though, who physically participated in the altercation, and by that, they showed zero deference towards their star and future of the franchise for a simple rookie mistake. Then, even worse, team leadership publicly called DeMarcus out for what happened in the confines of the locker room. And then, the dipshit coach, in an interview with the local paper, went out of his way to reveal other incidents DeMarcus had been in. Mind you, these incidents were also behind closed doors type of thing where functional NBA teams usually avoid talking about. And here's your kicker. Every scenario, every incident was about basketball. It was all about the game for DeMarcus. Can nobody see that he's just not an angry person in general, in need of discipline? He was in need of a team, a coach, a GM that knew what they were doing. And yes, he should have been pissed that he didn't get the ball for the last shot. And yes, he should have yelled at the coach that other time. As the star and the focus of the franchise, when you're barely a 20-win team with a roster that's not that bad, it is his role to get answers or be the catalyst for some change. And apparently he was, because the very next year, seven games into the season, Coach Paul Westfall was fired. Look, every incident he has is about the game. He just simply thinks he's right. But as a result, coach after coach, GM and team officials show that they were never going to give him a chance or even a voice, as they reveal themselves as snakes. And just like the article said, DeMarcus loves you, he's gonna love you. But if he's upset about something, you're gonna see it. Because when it comes to basketball, DeMarcus isn't looking for a fight. He's just weeding out the fakes. We all know the second he finds his way to a winning team, all this passion towards the game, the stuff that's getting him in trouble, is gonna start getting framed in a positive light. as good for the team. But until then, this partial perspective on his character is a distraction and a problem. And these desk jerks just slurp it all up. And to prove my simple point even further, here's another story. Back in college, somehow, DeMarcus Cousins' phone number got leaked to a whole bunch of Mississippi State fans. And what do you think a whole bunch of garbage can Mississippians did with that number? Well, exactly what you think. They sent him a ton of vulgar and racist text messages. And some of them even had the audacity to call the number and leave the same sentiment on his voicemail. Now, in the ESPN article written by Earman Brennan, Earman. Earman continues, explaining how one would predict that DeMarcus Cousins would probably handle this situation poorly. And then he goes on to mention Cousins' on-court arguments with refs and disagreements with players, extrapolating that DeMarcus should almost certainly explode with anger as a result of this racist deluge. But to Earman's surprise, DeMarcus doesn't. To everyone's surprise, he not only takes it in stride, but he even answers the phone occasionally to talk to those whack jobs, as Earman puts it. The article even recounts DeMarcus was laughing the whole thing off to reporters, as if he doesn't seem to take this nonsense personally. Why is this surprising? Good Lord Jesus Christ, he's not a monster. He's not a pillaging barbarian. He's played basketball his entire life. He intentionally chose not to participate in a series of adolescent experiences, weighty moments in growing up, to dedicate himself to basketball. So he clearly takes basketball stuff directly to the heart, especially when folks continue to try and take it away from him or make basketball a toxic experience. They keep saying he needs discipline. Come on guys, discipline. Discipline is showing up to practice all those years in his teens and not scared skipping to pursue other things. So you get these moments where the talking shit bags in a cascading chorus reinforce this. That KD wants none of this man, because this man will kill him. And it's coming out of a bunch of frail, pasty, malnutrition, vitamin D <laughs> kissing sports commentator who clearly p at the sight of a sized man with a in his eyes. <laughs> <laughs>